Hey, welcome back, Cam30. You got the Z Dog and Wally G back with you today, live from Studio 1207, where we are here today to uh, tell you about Lab 14.2 in our chemistry program. And this is constructing voltaic cells. We hope you'll get a charge out of it and get energized. Uh, and so, our purpose today is to run through uh, two different sets of voltaic cells having different constructions. Uh, one with what we call a U-tube, a salt bridge. Ah, when I was in grade 11, this is all we knew is U-tube. And we also have the porous cup construction. And we'll go through the construction and operation of both of those sets. Your job, your task, is to uh, construct two label diagrams having anode, cathode, electrolytes, electron flow, all the labels, all the half reactions, the net equations, the net voltages, which we'll be uh, showing you today uh, on paper and submitting those. Make sure to refer to the rubric that's in the lab 14.2 assignment. You've got this, Chemstars. Howdy, it's Wally G here. So we're gonna construct our first cell and the first cell is gonna use a salt bridge. So this salt bridge or the U-tube is going to contain some sodium nitrate. And the way we do that is we're just gonna take our U-tube, we're gonna add some sodium nitrate. This is, uh, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But we'll add sodium nitrate to the top. And usually when we add our cotton, it likes to absorb a little bit of the sodium. So I might have to top it up again here in a second. Yep. What's the problem if we don't have enough electrolyte, Wally G? If we do not have enough electrolyte, then we cannot balance the charges while the cell is operating. And so we're gonna get a buildup of charge on one side, a buildup of negative charge on one side and positive charge on the other, and that will inhibit electrons from flowing. So our, our cell's not gonna work. So we need this salt bridge, ooh, there we go. We need this salt bridge to be able to allow the flow of cations and anions in whatever direction they're going to go. So we've got our salt bridge and we connect our two half cells together. And then all we need to do is put our electrodes in their respective half cells. And uh, all we have to do is, uh, is before, before we do this, um, here we've got aluminum. We're gonna put aluminum electrode in the aluminum ions. And uh, what we need to do is we need to sand down the oxide layer on the outside of the electrode. If we have the oxide layer, if we have a, a, an oxide layer on the outside of an electrode, it can inhibit the flow of electrons and actually reduce our cell potential that we eventually get. And we'll show you that uh, in a little bit. So all I have to do here, we've already pre-sanded all these electrodes. All we have to do is now that we have our two half cells put together and connected by the, uh, by the U-tube or the salt bridge, we just need to take one of our voltmeters connect them to the half cells, and then we'll be able to see the voltage. Hey, I'm back with you. And I'd like to uh, show you a couple different things in this segment. Uh, one being uh, the, the use of inert electrodes. So what we've got in this scenario is we've got uh, an oxidizing agent. Here we've got acidified potassium permanganate, and it does not have uh, paired with it a solid reducing agent. Um, looking over here, for example, in cell number four that we'll build, we have our reducing agent and a paired oxidizing agent, a metal cation. So metal cation, metal atom, metal cation, oxidizing agent, reducing agent. So you've got a pairings there. However, in the cell that I'm constructing, I have an oxidizing agent. I do not have um, metal atoms reducing agent. Um, there is no uh, partner a pairing for that. So what we use instead is an inert electrode. Uh, the choices are carbon. This is a carbon rod, a carbon electrode. Another um, option would be platinum. Platinum, more valuable than gold, is 
um, costly prohibitive. Uh, what else is different about this cell is that we'll be using what's called a porous cup. Now a porous cup is uh, made up of unglazed porcelain and that um, pr provides microscopic pores for ions to move in and out of this cup. So an alternate design to the salt bridge is the porous cup and it's going to allow for ion migration. This is a one beaker design pouring some permanganate ions into the porous cup and to complete this half cell I put my inert electrode my carbon electrode into the porous cup containing permanganate ions that all goes into my other half cell which um, is existing inside this beaker which are lead ions and a lead electrode and again the oxide layer has been sanded off this reducing agent so we don't inhibit electron flow and then simply we uh, connect our voltmeter our electrons flow from our anode to our cathode A to C and we're going to register uh, net voltage positive 1.25 volts folks Hey, so now we have all four cells set up. We've got two with salt bridges, two with porous cups. And something that we want you to bear in mind is that standard cells are constructed at standard ambient temperature and pressure, along with one mole per liter electrolyte concentration. Now, we don't have that here. It's very expensive and it's very wasteful costly to the environment to construct one mole per liter solutions so our electrolyte concentrations are 0.2 moles per liter so please bear that in mind when you're looking at your data book page 7 that's all based on one mole per liter um, concentrations and sta standard temperature and pressure next we're going to show you uh, close-ups of each cell and the net cell potential that we've measured. Okay, now that we've, uh, we've assembled all four of our cells and we've kind of taken a snapshot of what they look like and the cell potentials, for our first cell, the aluminum and copper cell, we had a potential of 0.46 volts. For the second cell, the zinc and acidified permanganate, remember that's the one with the uh, inert electrode because it doesn't have a solid electrode paired up with it. So uh, it produced a voltage of 1.77 volts. For the third cell, the lead and acidified permanganate, the one in the porous cup here, positive 1.37 volts. And then for the lead and copper, we had a cell potential of 0.47 volts. So now that you've seen four different cells, what we want you to do is we want you to draw two of these cells. Uh, one of them has to be uh, with a salt bridge, one of them has to be with a porous cup and one of them, one of the two, has to have an inert electrode as well. So draw the two cells, or uh, draw those two separate cells, and make sure you follow the rubric on your lab to make sure that you've answered all the questions and labeled everything appropriately on your diagram. Let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great day.